All right, so I'm sure you must have seen components like this, where there's a bunch of props. Some of them might be actual data, but almost always the majority are these Boolean flags. These flags help with conditionally showing a specific part of the component in a different way, or sometimes even decide whether that part should be rendered or not. Now there's nothing wrong with this approach, obviously, because the component renders and you see what you expect. But scaling becomes an issue here. This component is now open to one-off condition blocks. So say for instance, this card that you see on the screen, if you want to simply switch the position of these social action buttons, you'll have to add some logic in the component itself. But you know that it's a very special scenario, a one-off condition, and the rest of the application is going to use the original structure of the card. But just because you need to handle this particular scenario as well, you'll have to add additional logic to the component. Now imagine a big component with many such flags. Before you even realize it, the component is already bloated and difficult to comprehend. The solution to this problem is pretty straightforward. We build a suite of reusable components and place them wherever we want based on our convenience. And if you don't want a specific part, you can just remove it without adding any logic. This brings in a lot of flexibility from a developer's perspective and scaling the component now becomes much more easier. By the way, this pattern or this way of building React components is called the compound component pattern. The idea is to have two or more components that work together to accomplish a task, typically a parent and a child component. A Lego set would be a great example here. Each individual block has its own shape, color and purpose, but when combined together in a specific way, you build something much more complex and useful. So let's look at some code. I'll use pmpm as my bundler and I'll use weed to build the app. So let's create the app first. I'll use the react template to create this project. Let's go inside this directory. I'll run pmpm install. And just to see how the app looks like, let's just run pmpm dev. So we have our app running on port 5173. Now I need some additional third party libraries as well. I'll be using Tailwind throughout the application. So let's install that quickly. First, I'll go inside the project directory and then run pnpm add. Once this is done, let's create the Tailwind config file. Let me actually open up this folder. I need to also add the file types inside the Tailwind config. Let me do that. And finally, I'll need to copy the directives inside the index.css file. Yep. So Tailwind is ready. Now I'll be using two additional packages. One is a utility package called Tailwind Merge, which I'll use to conditionally pass in Tailwind classes. And the other one is React icons, which gives me, you know, icons. So let me do that. I also hate the default Windows Chrome font. So let me just quickly add a Google font. At the top here, I'll import the Google font link and at the bottom, I'll add the font. I don't need any of these styles. So let me just get rid of them. And I'll also change the background color here. So with that, we are done with the setup. And inside the app file, let me get rid of everything here. And I'll simply have a div. Let me also add some Tailwind classes to this div to make it look pretty. All right, this looks good. I don't even need this use state and I can get rid of all these imports. Now, this is all the setup that we needed. Now, traditionally, you would build the card component that we saw earlier in this format. The main component takes in a bunch of props and renders the markup based on these props. Now, this is fine for a small component, but what if I want the social icons here to be at the top of the component? What if I want the header to not even be present to so this section right here? This is the header section for this card. What if I don't even want this section? Going in, you normally build with the intent of reusing the same component across the app. Creating multiple components for different scenarios is not feasible. So you resort to passing props to this component and based on the prop, conditionally render or reorder parts of this component. So if I go by my previous example, 
I'll ideally have two flags inside this component, one dictating whether the header needs to be rendered and the other one dictating the position of the social icons. Then you try to access these props inside this component and write all the additional logic somewhere inside this component itself. If this component is used across the app for different scenarios, a bunch of other props will also come in and bloat the component. So let's not do this. Let's refactor and use a compound component pattern. I'll create a new file and I'll just call this card.jsx. So this is what the compound component pattern looks like. In here, I create all my components individually with a children prop. So whatever you pass inside a tag counts as its child or children. If I use this card component and inside I have an h1 tag and a p tag, they'll count as this card component's children. So for most of the components that I have, I use this children prop. I give the user full control on what they want to render inside these components. Also, I've just separated the Tailwind classes here from the component to make it more scalable. You can do the same thing in this other component as well. It's not like I'm trying to sell you the idea of this pattern. It's just that I did this later and was too lazy to do the same in the previous component. So yeah, inside the app file, I'll import all these components and structure them according to my needs. So I've imported all the components from this card component. And you can see here that this is a new card component that we have. So I have the header here. I have the social section here. So actually, let me show you what both of these cards look like. Obviously, both will look the same because they are essentially the same cards. Functionality wise, everything is pretty much the same. The only thing that's different here is that we have used the compound component pattern for this card. I have more flexibility with the components, with the individual components that you see in here. In the previous card, I don't have that much flexibility. If I want to change some part of this card for a particular scenario, I'll have to change the entire component itself. So now let's try to experiment with this card. I'll move the social section at the top just to see how it looks like. And you see that we have this section here. I can also remove the header section altogether. And I don't have that section anymore. If I want like a very minimalistic version of this card, ideally it would only have the image, the name and the role. So let's get rid of everything else. I'll actually keep the socials at the bottom. And yeah, this is the minimalistic version of our card. So normally in most cases, you already know beforehand what the component will look like. For example, if there's a profile directory, you would normally need only the basic details without any actions. So that directory component could render this minimal version of the card. In other areas of the app, you'll probably need the message and the call actions as well. So you can accordingly configure the component. Modal components also have a similar structure for the most part. So you can try this pattern and create a reusable modal component for yourself. Let's look at one more example. This tabs component that you see on the screen is yet another common component where you could use this pattern. In the case of this component, we need access to a state variable that will keep track of the current active tab. So you can pass the state using props, but sometimes there are chances of having a deeply nested component and drilling the prop to individual components is just ugly. This will not be that example though, but I'll still show you how you can do it without drilling the prop. So first things first, let's build the main tabs container. So let me create a new component. I'll call it tabs. And inside here, I'll need to create the container first. I have the tabs container here and I also have created a context. So this context is what we are going to use to pass in the state throughout the component. For now, we have just wrapped the component using the context provider. So any components that exist between this tabs component will have access to this context. Using the use context hook, we'll be able to access this state inside any of those components. So now let's add the tab component. This is the button that will that we'll use to switch between sections. Again, very similar to what we saw earlier. This is essentially a div tag and inside it we have the children. I have a bunch of Tailwind classes here. You can see that I'm using Tailwind merge. So essentially what I'm doing is I have these default classes here and at the end you'll see that I have a condition. So if the tab is an active tab, that means the user has clicked on this tab. 
then I'll have some additional classes added to this uh, tab component. So this is what I use Tailwind Merge for. Whenever I want to conditionally pass in Tailwind classes, I use this library. You'll also see that I'm using use context to get access to the active tab and change tab state items that I expose from this provider. So yeah, I'll have access to these and I can use them anywhere in my component. So anytime I click on this tab, this change tab is what's going to run and it's going to eventually change the active tab here. And since it will change the active tab here, any other component that has access to this active tab will automatically reflect the change. Finally, we need the actual tab section. So let me add that component as well. This again is pretty straightforward. We access the active tab from the tabs context and based on the active tab, we render that particular section. So if I'm clicked on tab one, content for that tab should only be visible. Anything other than that should not be rendered. Finally, I'll export all these components. So export Right, one more thing that you'd notice in other third party libraries is the way they export these so called compound components. If I open up the hover UI card from Radix UI, you'll see the hover card dot trigger and hover card dot content inside the main container. Since functions in JavaScript are essentially objects, we can also apply the same pattern in our component. So instead of exporting things directly, we'll default export the main tabs container and attach the other sub components to this container. So nothing fancy here, just a different way of exporting. That's all. So tabs dot tab will be the tab component. Tabs dot tab panel is the tab panel component. At the end, I'll export default tabs. Let me get rid of this. Now inside the app file, for now, I'll comment both of these cards out. Let me first import the tabs component. So import and I'll create the entire structure here. So as you can see here, I have the main tabs container. These are the tab buttons. I have these inside a container with a flex tailwind class. And at the bottom here, I have all the actual tab sections. So let's see what this looks like in the browser. Okay, there might be an error here. Oh, it looks like tailwind merge is not imported inside the tabs component. So let me import it. Let me zoom in a little bit. So it's currently on tab one and you can see the tab panel one. So this is a section that's mapped to this tab button. If I move to tab two, you'll see the tab panel two section. And similarly, if I move to tab three, you'll see the third section. I can move this tabs button section below the panel and everything should work as expected. Well, if I want to have two of these sections, I can do that as well. Because why not? This basically tells you how flexible you can make your component using this pattern. So this was basically a brief of this compound component pattern. It helps you build a solid design system that's easier to scale and is much more flexible than the traditional way of building components. You can try it out by building a custom modal component or an accordion component using this pattern and see how it benefits you. Other than that, if you have any doubts or suggestions, do let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.